Hi everyone, my name is Karen, this is my channel Rather Be Reading and today we are doing my wrap up for the months of May and June. First off, let me just apologise once again for being away for so long. I think it's been about six weeks since I uploaded um, a video to this channel. Um, I have all the regular excuses, life has just been extremely, extremely busy. Um, now that it's winter, it's already dark when I get home from work and I don't have the greatest lighting and so therefore it's really hard for me to film when I get home from work and I'm always really busy on the weekends, so I almost never have time to film during the day so it's just been difficult finding time to film and life has just been really really busy but hopefully I will have a lot more time to film now and can get some videos up for you guys. Um, Having said that I've been really, really busy, I have been reading, so that's really good. And I did upload um, weekly um, wrap-ups for the first three weeks of May, so I'm only going to be touching on those books very quickly. And I'm going to try to get through all these books quickly. I'll probably only talk about really in-depth the books that I either really enjoyed or really disliked, um, so that I can get through this really quickly. But this probably will be a bit of a longer video, so for that I apologise. But let's just jump straight in. So May was actually my worst um, reading month of the year um, so far. I only read nine books um, in May, which is still pretty good, but it is just the lowest amount of books that um, I've read. Um, the first eight books that I read in May I covered in the three weekly wrap-ups, as I mentioned, so I'm literally just going to tell you what the books are and what I rated them. First off, we have The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides, which I did not finish. I DNF'd this book, so obviously I did not enjoy it. We then have Don't Look Now by Rosalind Noonan, which I gave four stars. We then had All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven, which I gave 3.75 stars. Following on from that, in week two, we had Angel's Flight by Michael Connolly. This I gave 4.5 stars. Poirot Investigates by Agatha Christie, which I gave three and a half stars. Prodigal Sister by Laura Elliott, which I gave two and a half stars. Then we come to week three of May, in which I read Dangerous Girls by Abigail Haas, which I gave 4.75 stars. This one I really enjoyed and I did a video review of, which I will link down below. Also, the links to all of the weekly wrap-ups that I did in May will also be linked down below. Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates, two stars. Midnight by Eve Eschenbacher, which I gave one star and I really, really did not enjoy. If you watch my May week three wrap-up, you will see me rant about that book quite a bit. So now we come to the last week of May, which I only completed um, one book, and that was If You Find Me by Emily Murdoch. This I did enjoy. Um, I ended up giving it three and a half stars. This book follows um, two girls. Um, our main character is 16, and she has been living like in the wilderness in this caravan with like no electricity, no running water, and things like that with their her mother and her much younger sister and her mother like disappears for weeks at a time because she's got like a drug addiction and they've been living there with basically no human contact for years etc etc the mother disappears for quite a long length of time and the two well the older girl's father um comes to rescue them and to take them back to civilization and this book is kind of about them moving back into the civilized world I did enjoy this. I struggled with the dialogue a little bit um, as the main character obviously having lived in the wilderness like her dialogue is not great and I did struggle with that a bit but I did at the same time appreciate that it would probably be slightly realistic. One of the things that I found a little unrealistic was that at one point the two sisters are tested um, to see like kind of where they are, um, where they should go in at school, like what level they're at and they have been learning, like the older sister has been teaching herself and teaching her younger sister through books that the mother would get them from like secondhand bookshops, like textbooks and things, and they were tested and apparently they were both at like a much higher level than other kids their age, which I just found really not believable. I do think that you can learn a lot through teaching yourself and that they, you know, maybe wouldn't be as backward as they would have been if they didn't have those textbooks, but I do not believe that they would be so far ahead. I think there's only so much you can teach yourself through a textbook and they wouldn't have textbooks to cover everything and I just I just found that a little disbelievable. I also didn't like that the main character in this book is supposed to be so beautiful. Like why does she have to be so beautiful? Like how is that necessary to the plot? I just didn't feel like that was necessary. 
I did find this a little bit predictable, but I did like the writing and I was connected to the characters. So yes, I gave this three and a half stars. Now we come to the books that I read in June. I had a better reading month in June than I did in May and I ended up reading 12 books in June. The first of which was Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. Mansfield Park is the third book of Jane Austen's that I've read. I've previously this year read Pride and Prejudice, which was a reread, and Sense and Sensibility. Mansfield Park is definitely a much slower read than Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility, but I did still enjoy it. I did, however, just want a bit more from the ending. I just thought that after this big build up through like basically like over 500 pages that I would get more from the ending than what I did, but I did still really enjoy it and I gave it three and a half stars. The second book I read in June was Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll. This was a book that I was approved to read on NetGalley, so thank you to NetGalley and Simon and & Schuster for approving me to read this one. You may have seen this book around a little bit on um, booktube. Um, I personally really enjoyed this book and I gave it four stars. I didn't know going in that this book had been compared to Gone Girl and I think if I'd known that and I was making those comparisons in my mind I might not have enjoyed it as much as I did because I did see in a lot of reviews on Goodreads after I read it that a lot of people were saying oh this is no like Gone Girl and I agree that it isn't but I wasn't comparing the two in my mind so therefore I enjoyed this book just on its own merits so that was good. I found this book to be really engrossing it has a not unreliable main character but an unlikable main character. I did relate to her like certain aspects of herself but she is generally an unlikable character but I don't mind I actually quite enjoy sometimes reading from an unlikable protagonist. I will say this definitely has some trigger warnings for bullying, eating disorders and sexual assault so if that any of that bothers you I would maybe give this book a miss but I definitely enjoyed it and I gave it four stars. The third book that I read in June was Dark Companion by Marta Acosta. I actually really enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. It did, however, definitely have some problems. The pacing of this book is really good. Um, it just, at no point was I bored or thinking, oh, can we just get to like the good parts or what's going to happen next? And I didn't find any of the plot, like what I would call obvious. This book does contain some love triangle aspects. So if that's something that bothers you, you might not enjoy it. And that is part of the problems that I have with it. I don't mind a good love triangle, but I hated how into one of the guys this girl was when he was clearly just a massive asshole. Like, she was so into him, and I was like, why? He is such an asshole. Like, why are you so into him? I just didn't, I didn't get it, and I was really rooting for the other guy, so I did struggle with that a little bit. I will say that the best friend in this, Mary Violet, was definitely my favourite character. I absolutely loved her and she made this book an enjoyable read for sure. But yeah, I did still really enjoy this and I definitely recommend um, checking it out if it's something that it sounds like would be interesting to you because I did really enjoy it. So, four stars. Next, I read Keeper of the Heart by Johanna Lindsay. This is the second book to the Lysenterre, um trilogy. This is just like a quick, easy romance read, as I'm sure you can tell from the cover. I did have some problems with the portrayal of the sexual relationship, but I understand at the same time that this is set in a different world that doesn't follow kind of our same rules and principles for sexual relationships. So I did try to get past that, but it wasn't a great book or anything, and I just gave it two and a half stars. Next, I read Faking It by Leah Marie Brown. This is another book that I was approved for on NetGalley, so thank you NetGalley and Kensington Books. This is just a really easy, fun, kind of chick lit read. This follows a main character who is engaged but has led her fiancé to believe that she is maybe a little bit more pure than what she is. And when he finds out that she has lied, he breaks up with her and causes her to be fired from her job. And so she ends up going on her honeymoon with her best friend, which is like a cycling tour through France. And it's just all about her adventures. And it was just a really fun, easy, lighthearted read that I did really enjoy. And I gave three and a half stars. The next book I read in June was Exposed by Kimberly Marcus. I This book is a hidden gem in my opinion. I've never heard of this book. I don't, didn't know anything about it. It's just a book that I got off Book Outlet. 
um, in the Boxing Day sale and I didn't even realise that this was written in verse until I got it, um, which it is obviously written in verse and I really, really, really enjoyed this. This is the kind of book that it's really hard to say what the book is about without giving away real pivotal moments of the story, but I will just say that it follows a main character whose name is Liz, who is really into photography and she has a best friend, Kate. It is Kate, isn't it? Yes, and Kate and Liz's friendship starts to undergo some problems. I'll just say that. But I really, really, really enjoyed this book. The portrayal of all the relationships in this book was just brilliant. There were quite a few people on Goodreads who were saying that they didn't like the way this book was resolved in the end, like they didn't like the way it ended, but I think that's crazy because I think that this is really realistic and true to life. And in real life, not everything is always wrapped up in a nice cute little ribbon and you don't always have like this nice, neat, happy ending. And I'm not saying that the ending of this isn't happy, but it's just, I just thought the ending to this was really um, true to life. I... I, in case you couldn't tell, I really, really, really enjoyed this book. I definitely think it is worth picking up. And yes, I definitely gave this 5 out of 5 stars. The seventh book I read in June was A Bone to Pick by Charlene Harris. This is the second book in the Aurora Tea Garden series. I did enjoy this book, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I did the first one. For this book being like a mystery kind of series where our main character kind of solves like different crimes. I guess these are like cozy mysteries. Like they just, yeah, I'll call them cozy mysteries. For that genre of book, I just felt like the main character didn't do any like actual sleuthing in this. All of the things that she discovered and such were just kind of, she just stumbled upon. Like she didn't, wasn't actively trying to solve this mystery and I did struggle with that a little bit. I also mentioned when I talked about the first book that I didn't feel like the main character was very well developed and I will say that while she's a little bit more developed in this one I definitely feel like more work could be done on this and that I hope that she is further developed later in the series. Like I say I did enjoy this but I only gave it three stars. Next I picked up Handling the Undead by John Avide Lindquist. I'm really sorry if I butchered that name. Um, this is a horror story about zombies but it is not at all what I expected from a zombie read. This is the author of Let the Right One In, which I have not read, but I have seen the movie of. So I just, I don't really know what I expected going into this, but it wasn't what I expected, even though I didn't really have any expectations, if that makes sense. I didn't enjoy this book that much. And while it did raise some interesting questions, I did just find it a bit slow and dull. I did see on Goodreads a lot of people saying that this book is nowhere near as good as Let the Right One In, so I definitely think I will still pick that one up. But overall, I only gave this one two stars. The next book that I read was Girl Spoken For by Susie T. Ruse. This is yet an another NetGalley read, so thank you to Barclay Publishing and NetGalley. Unfortunately, I really, really, really didn't enjoy this book. I would say that I enjoyed this book only marginally better than I enjoyed Midnight by Eve Eschenbacher, which as I mentioned I read in May and really didn't enjoy. Um, the dialogue in this is bad, the pacing is bad, the characters just kind of seem like caricatures. This book I felt dealt very poorly with a important issue which is sexual assault. So I will say there are trigger warnings for sexual assault in this book. Um, I can't really speak to a lot of the problems that I had with this book without spoiling it. So I won't do that. I actually haven't written a review of this book yet, which I will hopefully be getting to very soon. So hopefully if you click into my Goodreads page, I will have a review up then. So if you are interested in seeing more, maybe check there and I will go into more of my spoilery thoughts on Goodreads. But I will just say that I just really didn't like it. I gave this one and a half stars. The tenth book I read in June was Where It Began by Anne Radish Stampler. This is a book that gave me really mixed feelings. I enjoyed it, but I had some problems with it as well, and the problems that I had with it were big problems that kind of overrode any like good feelings that I had about the book. There is one kind of main pivotal, 
I don't know if it, I'm not even actually sure if it was supposed to be a mystery because to me it was so obvious and I did not understand how the main character did not realise this big mystery and I also was annoyed by the fact that she apparently didn't un realise this until the end because even though maybe she was unaware of it there were a million characters in this book who were aware of it none of which told her because they all just assumed that she knew and it was just a bit ridiculous to me because I did not believe that she would go the length of time that she goes in this book without finding out this big secret. So overall I just I was really it struggled with what to rate this but in the end I went with 2.75 stars. Next, I read The Boys Club by Wendy Squires. This book is set in Australia and it follows a woman who is the head of the PR department for a major television station. Um, it does speak to some interesting issues of kind of sexism in the workplace and things like that, but overall I didn't really enjoy the story that much. Like there's supposed to be this kind of big showdown at the end that I thought was very anticlimactic and I just, it was just a bit boring and a bit meh for me. So I ended up giving this one two and a half stars. And the final book I read in June was The Truth About Forever by Melody Brown. The pacing in this book was a little off. It was in some parts extremely intriguing and then in other parts it was equally as unintriguing, a little bit slow and boring and you're just kind of waiting to get back to the good parts. I was definitely emotionally connected to the story though and I did get a bit glassy eyed in parts so I ended up giving this a three and a half stars. So there you have it, those are all the books that I read in May and June. Apologies again that this video is probably quite lengthy. I will also just say that I'm sorry that I was really crap about giving synopses for these um, books but as always I will have links to all of the books I talked about in the description below so um, click onto any of the books down there to be taken to see more of an in-depth description of what they're actually about. Again, apologies that I've been away so long, but stay tuned hopefully for some more videos coming really soon. I'm filming a big book haul soon as it was my birthday last month and I got a lot of books. So stay tuned for that and um, please like this video if you liked it. Please comment. As always, I love talking to you guys below in the comments and please subscribe if you want to see more. But that's all I've got for this video. Bye guys.